Hi everyone, my name is Jane O'Neill and this is our program called Perfect Portraits. It's the top 10 pets in art and I am coming to you representing uh, a, a company called Culturally Curious which runs art appreciation programs for groups of all kinds throughout New England. And I also work with uh, the New Hampshire Humanities Council and I, I run programs for them as well. Most of my programs are for adults, but um, I'm very excited to be working with the Children's Museum on this program. And so I brought my favorite child here. Who, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi. What's, your, what's your name? Teddy. And how old are you, Teddy? Five and a half. Excellent. So Teddy is my oldest son, and we're going to be talking about these pictures together. We're going to be looking at the top 10 pets in art, okay? All right, so let's get started. Number one, what are we looking at here, Teddy? A black cat. A black cat. And when I th see black cats, I think of Halloween and scary things. Does this look like a scary cat to you? A little, because it's angry. It has like an angry face, you think? Yeah. He's looking right out at us, isn't he? Yeah. Well, this was a, a, por a, a poster that was made by an artist to advertise for a, a popular theater that was called the Black Cat Theater. So this was like the symbol of the theater, this black cat, sort of like how you have like a gecko advertising for Geico. So it sort of looks like he has a little crown on, doesn't he? Yeah, and yeah. he has sort of like an old fashioned fan. It sort of looks like or like a little back yeah. crown. Yeah. So this artist, whose name was Steinlein, loved to paint cats. He would actually go out um, from his apartment in Paris and feed dozens of cats every single day. So here's another painting that he did of cats. Mm. It, That's nice. I like that they, one too. They may, he may be pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah, they look like real cats, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, this one over here, the poster sort of looks more like a cartoon than, than like a real cat, right? That one sort of looks mostly real. Yeah, this one over here. It's yeah. a light brown one. Yes. So I really, so I really like the one in the poster though, because he seems to have a lot of personality, doesn't he? Yeah. The artist really liked these cats because they were independent and and very free. So our number two pets, top pets in art, is this one here. This is by an artist named John Singleton Copley. It was painted hundreds of years ago. What is the pet we're looking at here? A gliding squirrel. A gliding squirrel? How did you know it's a gliding squirrel? Because it doesn't flap. No, oh, it doesn't flap. That's right. It doesn't have wings. So we're looking at this beautiful painting of this young boy. He was actually the stepbrother to the artist. And down right in front of him on the table is a little gliding squirrel eating a nut. <laughs> He's so cute, right? He's got the little nut in his hands. And look at this. He's on this like very delicate gold chain. It's almost like jewelry. His little leash is like jewelry, isn't it? Yep, it's like a necklace or something. Exactly, it is like a necklace. And like, look. you have sort of a chain necklace like that. Yeah, I do. And look, he's got like his own little glass of water. And did you know that, that little boys, just like you, back in the 1700s when America was just becoming a country, all these little boys had trained squirrels that they kept on leashes. And a lot of them, they let their little squirrels sit on their shoulders. <laughs> Would you ever let a squirrel sit on your shoulders? Maybe. Maybe if you could train it real good, right? <laughs> yeah, and they're both cute squirrels. They're both cute, and they both have um, that nice little delicate leash going on there. All right. Oh, who's that? Scaredy Squirrel. Scaredy Squirrel is one of our favorite books, and it's mm -hmm. a book where the squirrel finds out that he is a gliding squirrel, right? That's the very moment that he, can, he realizes he can fly. All right, so <laughs> number three in top pets here is this painting here, and it's done by an artist named Leonardo da Vinci. It was done almost 500 years ago. Now, this is a weird-looking pet, isn't it? Uh-huh. Do you know what this pet is? 
I still forget the name. Oh, that's okay. The name of it is an ermine. It's sort uh, of like I, a weasel. I, 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 want, I want you to just say quiet. Oh, okay. Uh, it's an ermine. It's an ermine, and it's sort of like a weasel. It's kind of a yeah. funny-looking pet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Well, if, if you're a big Harry Potter fan, you're a Harry Potter fan, right? Uh -huh. In a Harry Potter movie, Draco Malfoy is turned into a ferret like the one that you see on the right here. Uh, and a ferret looks a lot like an ermine, doesn't it? Yeah, and he only stayed like in there for 25 oh, yeah, seconds. Oh yeah, right, yeah, just a few seconds he was a ferret, right? Yeah. So the artist that painted this lady with an ermine, is it, doesn't she have beautiful clothes and jewelry and all that? Yeah, and she very fancy beautiful. pet. Yeah. She, he also painted this painting over mm -hmm. here. Do you, have you ever seen that painting on the left? Um, I did see some in movies, like yeah. you. Maybe, maybe in a movie or something? She's, gen she's called the Mona Lisa, and people think of her as the most famous painting in the world. So Leonardo da Vinci painted both of these ladies, but he gave the one on the right that very special pet. All right, so. All right, so now we are up to number four. And what's our pet here, Teddy? Goldfish. A goldfish. Do, do you think it might be boring to be a goldfish and to be stuck in a bowl like that yeah. all day? You can stay there for a pretty long time. Yeah. So I think this woman in this picture is sort of like that goldfish. She's stuck inside. She's really beautiful to look at, but it should, maybe she's a little bit bored. Guess what? The artist who painted this, you'll never believe what his name is. What? Child. Can you imagine if we called you child all, all through your whole life, even when you were a grown up? So look at this. We've seen lots of famous, famous goldfish over the years. Who's this goldfish? Dorothy. Dorothy. Elmo's goldfish, Dorothy. And you know, Elmo always asks Dorothy questions. Does she ever answer? Uh, she, she doesn't make a sound, but sometimes Dorothy imagines things. Oh yeah, or maybe she just goes blub, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Elmo sort of does the says because it's, and he's not really talking. So here's one more painting of a goldfish. This is by a famous French painter named Henri Matisse. And I gotta ask you, Teddy, do you like one of these paintings better than the other? Which goldfish painting would you rather have? What do you think? I would like to take that one. Oh, it's a little real. You like the one on the left because it's a little bit more real? Yep. You know, I think I might like the one on the right because... I, I like both of them. Oh, yeah, they're both pretty, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I like the one on the right because of all the purple and the green and the orange. I think that looks really good. And there are some colors mixed in with yeah. red. Oh, yeah. We were talking about uh, primary colors, red, yellow, blue. And these are all secondary colors, right? So these are greens, purples, and orange. So you have to mix the primary colors to get the secondary colors. Yeah. All right. Number five. Are you ready? What are we looking at here? A puppy. Oh, a cute deep one. Oh my goodness, isn't this one of the cutest puppies you've ever seen? Yep, I never saw a puppy <laughs> as cute as that one. Maybe he's just resting because his eyes open. Oh yeah, his eyes are still open. Even though this one's called Sleeping Dog, he looks like he's either just waking up or just falling asleep, right? Yep. But everything about him looks so real. That's why I love this painting. I feel like I could touch his little ear. I feel like I could touch that bundle of sticks. Like you, you think you could touch the ear and you could yeah. sort of figure out what's in there, but yeah. it's not really in front of you. Right, it's just a painting, right? Yeah. But that little dog just seems so sweet. I mean, he seems like a really nice companion. Now, artists throughout the years have always loved to paint sleeping dogs. And this is one of the most famous. This is another one of the most famous pictures of a sleeping dog. And he's another cutie. He is another cutie. I think his name was Rattler. 
and he was painted by an artist named Andrew Wyatt. And look at what he's doing. He's sleeping in the artist's bed. This picture is called Master Bedroom, and it shows that sometimes the dog can rule the whole house. He's sleeping on that bed like it's his own, isn't he? Yep. Where's the artist supposed to sleep? In the puppy bed. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be rough. All right, let's see what our next one is. This is number six. Ooh, this is by an artist named Norman Rockwell, and it's called Election Day. Now, this one has three different kinds of animals in it. I don't know. Can you see any of the different kinds of animals? So we got a cat yep. and a dog and a teddy bear. Oh, yeah. We got a cat up here on the back of her chair, a dog below her chair, and you see the teddy bear? Yeah. I'm also noticing just above them is a bird cage. Yeah. yeah. And the teddy bears are supposed to mostly... So it would be cuter versions of the real teddy bear. Yeah, well, you're my teddy bear, and you're certainly mm -hmm. very cute. Um, so this is a picture that's all about people not getting along, people fighting. Be because dogs and cats do not get along. Exactly. So in this picture, it's the grown-ups that aren't getting along. But Norman Rockwell, our artist, wants to sort of emphasize that point so he put dogs and cats in this picture to show that that it's really about a big fight right and so they're just and what's that big fight making this little guy do cry. yeah nobody likes to hear people fight right <laughs> i'm sure they'll make up and get along anyway so we got dogs and cats living together here <laughs> all right number seven are you ready what's it gonna be <gasps> Oh, number seven. This is a picture that's called the duet. Do you remember what a duet is? A duet is when two people make music together. Two people make music together. Yeah, so in this picture, we've got this beautiful woman in this incredible dress, and she has got this like old fashioned piano in front of her. And you, and if and also, there is a little parrot standing oh, in front of the piano. Yes, look at that. There's, so she's being she's playing the piano, and she's got this little parrot right over here. Yeah, and and he's another cutie like the dog. Yeah, and parrots. Do you know what parrots can do? What? Parrots can talk, and parrots can sing. So, do you remember the movie Rio, where they had the blue macaws? Mm -hmm. That's what this parrot sort of reminds me of. Um, so, this mm -hmm. parrot might be doing the duet with her. It might be singing along with her. Wouldn't that be funny to think about how that sounded? Yeah. Do th I, I don't think parrots can sing that well. How about you? Not me either. They just might go, ka, ka. <laughs> yeah, right? I oh. do have this bird. Right. Oh, yeah, that's sort of like a parrot right there. Look at that. <laughs> All right, we only have a few left to go. Here we go. Number eight. Oh, we're in our top three. Um, what are we looking at here? What kind of animal is this? A boinky bunny. Oh, yeah, a hopping bunny. Oh, my goodness. But this bunny, it's a beautiful bunny, isn't it? Yeah. And look at all of the nature all around it. Yeah, it's so we got a butterfly there, butterfly, snow there, snail. and maybe like a little snake or a lizard there. And there's a little grasshopper. A grasshopper. Look what I'm seeing up here. Even like a bird up here. There's all sorts of good things, all kinds of animals and insects. And they're just trying to blend in. Do you think a bunny would be a good pet? Uh, yeah. Yeah? We can feed it. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're very sweet. And look at this. They they eat leaves. I think he's eating a leaf right there. So our our artist here, Hans Hoffman, was probably inspired by this other beautiful watercolor of a bunny rabbit, of a hare, that's very, very detailed and specific, right? But Hans Hoffman gives us all this other beautiful information about where a bunny rabbit would live. And Teddy, we we used to have this book over here by Richard Scarry that was about a bunny rabbit. And look at how similar these pictures are. It's about a bunny and all of the all of the information about where he lives. So we see like berries and little flowers and other birds and that sort of thing. And so there's not there's not insects or anything. You don't see any bugs on the one on the right? Nope. You're right, I don't see any either. 
maybe if we stared long enough, we'd see them, but there's a lot of good info there, right? Yeah. Like we got some strawberries, berries, yeah. and there is some flowers over there. Yeah. Maybe that might be strawberry. They're pretty similar, right? Yeah. All right, number nine. You ready for number nine? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, this is a funny looking picture, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you see any pets in this picture? There is a little Oh yeah, a little cute puppy right down there in the front. Now, this is a strange picture. These are two kind of funny looking people. Now, you'll never believe what they're doing. What? They're probably getting married. This is like a very old picture where two people might be getting married. You can see that they're holding hands here, but he looks very serious. She looks very serious. But the dog is actually the big clue that this could be a wedding. You know why? Why? Because dogs have been a symbol of love and fidelity for hundreds and hundreds of years. Because dogs, once they love you, they love you forever. So look at this. This is such a famous picture that people like to recreate it. They did it in Legos over here on the right. Who's this over here on the left? Hermit and Miss Piggy. Yeah, so people like to recreate it. And guess what? People are so bored sometimes during the COVID-19 pandemic. They recreate it in their own apartments and in their houses. They recreated this painting. But let's take a look at the little puppy dog. Oh, he's a cute one. Oh, isn't he a cutie? There's he's a... like, you could just hold him in your hand like this. Right. He's... It looks like I'm holding him. <laughs> he's a real sweet one. I love his little black nose. And I love the way his little eyes look out, right out at us. And it looks like the artist probably used a teeny tiny paintbrush to paint each one of those hairs. Because you can see each individual hair on that dog, can't you? Yep. All right. All right, are you ready for number 10? Uh -huh. Number 10, here we go. What are we looking at for pets here? Monkeys. Monkeys. And this is one of my favorite artists. Her name is Frida Kahlo. She lived in Mexico and she actually did have pet monkeys. She had pet birds and pet monkeys. Can you tell me how many monkeys you see here? One, two, three. Four. Excellent. And what are they doing? Mm -hmm. they're, they're hugging her up. They are hugging her up. They just love her. They're, they're going. Mm, you're like my little monkey, Teddy. And you know what? Frida always wanted to have her own children, and she never got the chance. So I think she took care of these monkeys like they were her own. And I think for a lot of people, pets are like part of the family. Um, so Many kids your age have probably seen Frida Kahlo before if they've seen the movie Coco, right? Do you remember her character in that movie? She was an artist. And look, right behind her, she's painting a, a picture of her with monkeys. <laughs> so they, they really got that right in, in, the picture, in, in the movie, didn't they? Yeah, so the, it's sort of like an act out. Yeah. It's sort of like... She is sort of like programmed there. Right. It's sort of like she came alive in the movie, right? And like like she like she was programmed there and there. Exactly. So I can't thank you enough, Teddy, for helping me out with this mm -hmm. program. And I just wanted to remind everybody to continue okay. supporting the wonderful children's museum mm -hmm. and makers mm -hmm. makers fest. And if you want to learn more about what I do in terms of art appreciation programs, please visit my website or our Facebook page, or you can see more examples of my programs for adults. Unfortunately, they don't have this cutie in it um, on our YouTube channel as well. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much, Teddy. You were great.